you guys that are going to be running the giant, if you move this giant this way, you're all right. But if you go this way, yeah. if you go like that, that happens. That's why you don't want your phone in your pocket. I'm a goddamn genius. John Reeves isn't one to sell himself short. As the owner of Fairbanks Gold, he was able to get his hands on decades-old mining records that should lead to gold on his land. And this summer, he's bringing in his kids to help with the treasure hunt. We're looking for the gold that we don't know about. That's what prospecting's all about. We're looking for the stuff we're not aware of. And there's no getting around prospecting. Even though I have the drill logs, even though I have the prospecting reports, even though I have the maps and everything else, you have to ground truth it. So far, so good. The Reeves detective work has helped identify millions of dollars in gold on land John owns just outside of Fairbanks. Using a long tom, they prospected the Gold Stream Valley and discovered what could be a fortune in unmined gold. However, using Reeves' records and satellite imagery, they might be onto their most lucrative site yet. We are just outside of Fairbanks right now. We're in a valley. At one time, it had four gold dredges working in. The dredges never made it this far down. We have still quite a bit of exploratory work to do on the stuff we're looking at now. John's prospecting land he owns all across the interior, including some near the Fort Knox mine, one of the richest mining sites in Alaska. We're going to be doing a lot of exploration for old mine sites. And we're going to be sampling a lot of piles of overburden to see if they carry any economic values of gold. We're going to go down the whole three miles and we're going to sample the s*** out of it. Oh, uh, when did uh -oh. this happen? Oh, I'm not going to get across there today. There's a wash out here. Looks like a gully washer. Alaskan weather can be a game changer. And this season has brought more than its fair share of rain. It's just the littlest things that can cause your whole operation to go to And when it goes to it goes there quick. It doesn't take days or weeks. It can go upside down in a second. Oh, I'm not going to get across there today. Before John Reeves can continue following this hot trail to gold, he's got a washed out road to repair. He's got to go get a cat, bring it down here, fix this before we can go over there. While using heavy equipment is no problem for Reeves, the fact that there may be gold in his road building gravel most certainly is. Just something wrong about paving the road with gold. And Reeves isn't the only one using potentially gold-rich gravel from this valley. His neighbor, gravel dealer Jack Phipps, has been doing it for years. Jack has boiled the rock sorting business down to a hard science. Next stop for Phipps Gravel is the Alaska State Highway System. Thing is, Reeves has good reason to believe there's a lot of gold in those tailings. Gold the old mining companies might have missed. They ended here in 1929. They're going down the creek. This is their first cut. And the way the dredge, you can notice these little waves. The dredge had to cut back and forth. I've been telling Jack, you know, the dredge wasn't very efficient when it went through here. and, and you might want to pan your tailings just to see if there's any gold in there. But Jack's been a hard man to convince. For years I've been saying, hey man, you know there's a lot of gold in that gravel. And I don't think Jack believed me because he's in the gravel business. Jack wouldn't even check his gravel for gold until the price of gold more than tripled. I know a lot of old guys that, you know, I've worked with over the years. Their opinion was the dredge got most of the, the gold. It's hard to say, I, you know. But John Reeves isn't one to let an opportunity slip by, especially with gold prices running more than 1500 bucks an ounce. The important thing for me, and why I've always encouraged Jack to test it, is because I own a lot of ground right next to him. Literally millions of yards of that kind of dirt right next door. They say a good prospector has a nose for gold, and John's like a bloodhound. To see if he's right about the gravel, he has his kids sample some of his sites.
first thing first, we're just going to go sample it. Grab a bucket right there, a bucket over here, and one in this pile right behind me. And remember where they came from. When John Reeves and son Kinsey set off to prospect for gold on their land in Alaska, they found themselves stopped cold by a washed out road. Okay. Just gotta go get a cat, bring it down here, fix this before we can go over there. But before he begins the repair, Reeves wants to be sure his road building gravel isn't laced with $1,500 an ounce gold. Back to Rocket Box and see how much gold I'm gonna pave the road with. Pan it down to concentrates, and then uh, we'll see what we got in that little sample. A rocker box, all that does is recreate a little miniature creek. You got the flowing water, you got the action of the creek, and the gold gets caught, boom, it's caught in a bedrock. I'm excited. I like the rocker box in a weird way. It's better to do knowing I only have five buckets than a 10-yard pile. <laughs> One thing for sure that's going to happen today is I will know whether or not I'm going to build another access road using that material this summer or not. On the one hand, I'd like them to find some gold in that stuff, and on the other hand, I hope they don't. I don't like the idea of laying gold down on the road. While Reeves is hoping not to find gold in his gravel, back in Fox, the Reeves are about to find out if their road building gravel indeed contains gold. I'm so close from this whole trough. Get in my space now. <laughs> All that we've been panning lately is fly specs. Now with these pans, once we get done to the bitterns, we've got to slow down because we're dealing with really fine gold. And it's really light, so we've got to be gentle. It took all day long to pan that concentrate. It was very tedious, just pan after pan after pan. Knock, knock. Who's there? Gold. Gold who? Just kidding, pyrite, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh wow! Nugget! Yeah, nugget. Yeah, see, oh look. my gosh! Let's, let's see. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> now I think he might be interested in it. <laughs> wow! Thanks, Laura. I have a probably a better one than you. Oh my gosh! Do. I got a nugget and a couple other pieces. Three, four pretty good sized flakes in this. One. Coarse gold is kind of interesting. Another nugget. 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 <laughs> nugget. <laughs> it's interesting. Nuggets make things interesting. <laughs> and big nuggets can be game changers. What do you think he's going to say? Well, I was right. <laughs> Any luck, Lou? My head's telling me, please be skunky. Be oh. skunky. Please so come. you'd be disappointed if we found gold? Yes, I will be. That means we've got to spend a lot more time over there on that pile of dirt we just started. Okay. All right, Dad. Have fun there. Here you go. Could old father. Ooh, ooh. Oops. No. Oh, <laughs> I got a nugget and a couple other pieces. Four pretty good-sized nuggets. Uh, <laughs> we got problems. <laughs> <laughs> So here's what we're going to do. This is one cubic yard of gravel. Whatever that weighs times 90,000 is how much gold we can expect to find in that pile of dirt. That means that we just found thousands of yards of probably economically viable and recoverable dirt. So I can't build a road anytime soon. We'll weigh this. We'll figure out what the value of the cubic yard is. Congratulations, you guys. You just the summer all up. Of course, John's only kidding. He and his kids shoot back to Fairbanks to weigh the gold they found. Let's clean this up. <laughs> We're going to weigh it up on this little jeweler scale I have here. All eyes are on the scale. He needs gravel to build a road, but if it's rich in gold, he won't be using it to build anything. Point four. Let's do the math on this. Kitco, 
$1,500 an ounce at today's price, which is all over the place, is $48 per gram. That is 0.4 of a gram. $48 times 0.4 equals $19. So $19 per cubic yard, and we have 90,000 okay, cubic that's, yards. That's $1.7 million in gold. Hardly road building material. But you won't hear Reeves or the kids complaining. What it tells me <clears throat> is that I'm not going to be using that material to build a road. Okay. Any questions anywhere? Anybody happy? Everybody happy? 100 miles away, John Reeves pays a visit to his buddy, gravel dealer Jack Phipps. Jack's been washing his gravel, finally. And John wants to give him a hand separating his concentrates. Jack, my boy! How we doing, John? Good, how you doing, man? No, oh, I don't know. Do a little cleanup? Yeah, see what happens, anyhow. They set up a rocker box to show Jack what he's got. That's nice and heavy, Jack. We can screen it down and get rid of this stuff. Yeah. And then we can pan. You gotta have enough water that it carries your material down over yeah. the top of that. Hey, Jack. Yep. Come here, man. Yep. What's your eyes say to that? Yeah. I don't have my reading glasses on, but I know what it looks like. Well, I know what it looks like, but I, I, there's so many rocks out here. I can't see it. That look. Well, that is. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Check it out. It is. Okay. It's, it's surprising what's in this stuff. Well, you know. Yeah. Somebody you know, I was telling you for years. I know, but, you know. Somebody, no, no, somebody was telling you for years. <laughs> now that Jack's finally convinced, Reeves wants to show him how the pros pan for gold. Let me, let me show you a few tricks. The fact is, there's no gold, Jack. It's going to be on top. None. you got to let the water come in and take care of it. Just let it do that. If you see gold starting to creep up the side. Mm -hmm. Then you shake it all back down to the bottom. Yeah, no, this is, I think you're gonna have fun this summer. Holy look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. You got some nuggets in there, Jack. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty good. You're gonna do real yeah, good on that. Good. You and me are gonna have a wonderful relationship in the future. Unless he goes through all his and gets all his gold out. It's gonna take a while. You know how much of this is out on the road right yeah. now? No, no. You're gonna have to start going and reclaim these driveways that these I, guys I had a guy had put in. Call me this spring one and know if I had any more of that dirt. Uh, he's got be. a setup at home just like yeah. you got. He's going, Jack, I need another couple dump dump loads. But he does holy eyes, go out and pan your yard. If anybody asks me, where can I go find gold in Fairbanks? I just tell him go to a subdivision and dig in somebody's driveway. We're gonna leave the rocker box here for Jack to use. So that means we won't be able to rock a box on Monday? Ah, oh, darn it. John's convinced he can turn anyone into a first-class prospector. Can we have a coffee break at some point? I want Why don't you rock a box and time. we'll see if some coffee shows up. How about that? But now, it's time to get back to canvassing his own land for gold. The Reeves are looking to get back on the road to riches. My dad's gonna bring uh, the D8R back here and fix that uh, washout we saw earlier. But John Reeves won't be using any gold-laced gravel to repair his access road. Instead, he'll do the job himself with a few tons of far less valuable dirt. It's not a permanent solution, but it's a smart one. With the road reopened, Reeves can get back to the business of prospecting for gold. His goal this season remains clear. Find all the hot spots on his land and stake them out for mining next season. We have ground that we know is good. The gold is already there. The gold's there. We're gonna just go get it. This isn't a wait and see game. You know, I don't wait for anything. I'm not waiting for shit.